what's up guys it is Dan from five with and today I'm joined by somebody who I'm very excited to speak with today if you guys have been keeping up with my journey of doing these interviews you'll know that I'm a very big fan of the Igor MMA gym in Bondi Beach in Sydney Australia you know just a gym full of a lot of guys that are very young in a similar age bracket as me who I really much look up to in terms of like inspiration and for what they've done in the sport in such a long time credit to obviously both the Igor uh, MMA coaches e bit well, how they like to don on Big Igor and Little Igor, but, you know, just uh, also Josh Kulabau and just, you know, an amazing support system. And I've interviewed almost every single fighter from that gym just because of how amazing they are and just the great people that they are. And this guy is no different, obviously coming off winning gold at Gamma in New Zealand, you know, just a phenomenal guy on the come up. Really somebody who I would love for you guys to keep up with going forward. Just somebody who's really made a name for himself in the gym as a quality training partner, as a quality coach for the guys coming up, and just somebody who's really been an inspiration for the people around him. And today I'm joined by none other than Flame Gallia. How are you doing today, my brother? I know we were talking off air, but I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited to be on here. Excited to be talking to you. No, yeah, you're definitely, ready. man. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, obviously, first and foremost, you're coming off a go winning gold at Gamma, a phenomenal yeah. out of body experience. I can imagine, dude. You know, first and foremost, obviously, how are you feeling off coming off that result? And talk to me a little bit about that experience and how obviously things have maybe settled since coming back to Australia and just the experience in New Zealand. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, physically how I'm feeling, I was pretty damn lucky to get away unscathed. Um, I feel, I feel awesome. I mean. I'm, I'm someone that's been waiting to get in the cage for a long time. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been training martial arts for, for a little while now, and I, I was just trying to not rush that process, and my coach didn't want me to rush that process. So uh, after a couple of years of wanting to get in there, I finally got in there. It was pretty amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that I did wait and take that time because, man, it felt pretty good uh, getting in there and, you know, debuting in a, in, a, in a pretty nice fashion. I got in there, got that first round – TKO in the first minute. Um, so I pretty much, yeah, got in there, smashed the guy, you know, got on top of him in a mount triangle and just ground and pound. And man, after that, look, uh, I'll say I acted a little bit foolish. Like, that's true. Like, I yelled and I was like, you know, I was so G'd up. But, um, you know, that, would, that was years of, years of thinking about that exact moment just coming out of me. Um, man, I, I finished that fight in that mounted triangle, punching him in the face like I've been visualizing for years like seriously that exact position um i get i get people in all sorts of things but i just for some reason i just knew that that was how it was going to end which was really cool so when i actually got that i was yelling out you know i was yelling that's what i said that's what i said and you know it was funny because i really didn't say it to that many people and i realized after i'm like who did i say that to i was like i said that to myself you know what i mean like that's what i said to myself and maybe a couple of people you know my my best mates and and my brother but generally speaking i didn't really say it to many people but yeah and then um yeah there's then there wasn't really much time to enjoy that to be honest it was sort of like it was sort of i got to enjoy that for about two minutes less even and then what had happened was the next peep the next person that i was going to fight was the winner of the fight directly after me in the same ring so i didn't get to go back i didn't get to talk to my talk, talk to my brother and my dad much like i literally walked off and walked straight into the stands and then I was watching the next fight and man, these guys could bang. They were they were going at it. They were crazy. And I was like, I was told this was my next fight. Like, are you sure these guys are in my division? Um, not because I didn't have confidence, because they looked bigger than me and they looked a hell of a lot more experienced than me. And um, I'm there, I'm watching, I'm like, man. And I happened to be right next to the guy's dad who I ended up fighting. I didn't know that at the time. And he's talking about him, like Gene up his son and stuff, saying, yeah, just the other week he knocked someone out in 17 seconds. I later watched that. Freak, am I allowed to swear on this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah fucking swear. crazy knockout, man. It was just insane. Like, flatten the guy out. Anyway, I'm lucky I didn't watch that before. I didn't want to get in my own head. Um, I'm watching these guys go, man. I'm seeing like I'm seeing some pretty good wrestling. I'm seeing some pretty damn good striking. Like I'm talking like crisp boxing, crisp crisp leg kicks. Like everything was moving nice. And the guy that that won, he didn't get the finish, but man, he was just on fire, right? Like he just moved like a unit and he hit like a fucking tank. And um, I was like, man, okay. So I'm fighting this guy. So it's 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 
not scary, um, but it's 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 going to be a challenge, you know. Um, the one thing that I did notice is that although they both had some good jujitsu, I knew I had them there. I knew I had them there, and I was like, all right, well, this is going to be a matter of what this fight is. So. I got in there, I, I spoke to my coach straight after that. Now, this is only, that fight finished and it had only been 10 minutes since I had my debut. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, this guy that I was about to fight was going 4-0 and already. Um, so like, he was a lot more experienced than me and pretty, pretty damn good. Had some pretty heavy hands. I called my coach, I said, coach, I won my first one. I just watched the second guys. This is what's happening, you know, congrats, whatever. And then, well, not congrats, whatever. He was super happy for me, you know. Um, he said, okay, let's do this. Let's keep him at distance with our with our tapes. And the second we get the chance, let's shoot in. Now, I didn't get the chance to uh, to, to tape. I found I found him like we got in that we got in that uh, in that ring the second time. So I was in a ring, not a cage, which was kind of strange. I got in there, hit him with a pretty mean overhand, to be honest. And he just stood there, eh? I, 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 I hit him, drop low, boom, like, like absolute Joe Luchanese special. And, um, and, uh, yeah, no, it didn't do anything to him. And then he hit me back a couple times hard. I clinched up. I was like, oh, now you're fucked. <laughs> now you're fucked. And then, then the it was throw my came, and, uh, man. The throw. Sorry? The throw right to follow up after the clinch. I saw that throw on your Instagram story. And honestly, yeah. dude. For a guy who fought his MMA debut 10 minutes before and to adjust on the fly like that, dude, unreal. The throw into the mount and then the armbar setup off of that, you know, fucking amazing setup. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it's nothing I haven't done before, you know. It's 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 weird because it was my debut, but I've done jiu-jitsu, like, a fair bit. And um, I spent a lot of hours on the mat and, you know, it, it, it does go unseen for most people. But I knew I had it in me. Like, I knew that the second we locked up, he was gone, you know. I knew that. And it's not just that. I know I can strike as well. I know that. But this guy was at a higher level than me. I'll just say that straight away. He was at a higher level striking than me. So I knew that that was the game I was going to play that that time. And, um, yeah, man, like, I, I, I felt it right there. Like, I know, I know it's uh, a bit weird. Some people tend to... Even I think go as far as not even believe me when it comes to these sort of things. Well, I usually don't talk to many people about it, but I I have a lot of visions when it comes to this sort of thing. I have a lot of visions when it comes to what I'm going to do as in before the fight, but also in the fight. And I felt as soon as we locked up, I just, I could see it. I could see like a clear path. I knew he was going to throw a knee. He threw a knee and I was like, okay, beautiful. That didn't fucking hurt. Like... I, I, I know I can take a shot, you know what I mean? He he sent me a big knee, didn't hurt. And then I was like, okay, the next time he's going to go for it, he's going to be off balance. And I just stepped my leg in front, big judo throw. I think it was, it was like sort of an uh, an Ogoshi, um, a bit of a judo throw, uh, a little bit different, I guess, a little bit altered. Um, and I actually thought I knocked him out on the throw. Uh, he, he wasn't knocked out, but he just went limp for a second. I was like, no way. But I must have just, I don't know. I, I must have I must have just made him go, <gasps> you know what I mean? And then, yeah, from there, from there, like, it was the, the mental game was just see it later. And, yeah, I, look, I could blab on about this forever. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, there, there was there was a, there was a little there, there was a very large part of of that day. And especially with that guy. Um, that was mental. Uh, for me, I, I was and I am, am in such a strong mental state. I truly believe that I am going all the way and I know that these people are just like someone in my way, you know? And it was like the first guy, he was scared, like completely. I won the fight before the fight, you know? He was, I, I was I was in his head, not being a dick or anything, but just looking straight at him in, in the eye, getting in the fight before the fight, just like my coach tells me to. Um, having that mental connection and the second we got there we didn't even have to fight he could have just tapped the floor you know like it was i'd won the second guy was very arrogant he was you know i, I don't think he was a bad guy by any means you know but he was he was very very cocky and honestly a bit rude um you know whatever it's 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 the hurt business i'm not expecting them to you know be polite um, but at the same time, we're also all martial artists and I thought that was a bit shit, but I was like, you know, whatever, if he wants to be like this, I'll teach him a, I'll teach him a lesson the hard way, you know? And, um, we came in, it was pretty funny. Like 
before like I look at him and I, this is what I do, right? Like I look you down and I'm not, I'm not even trying to intimidate you. I'm just getting myself in the fight, right? I'm just looking at him and he looks off at his mates because look at this guy, G. Like, you know, like uh, just saying like, look at this guy. Like I think I'm like top shit or whatever, whatever. And he's like instantly calling for reinforcements from his mate. And I was like, just lost just like that, just like that. And then we get in the ring. He looks at me, the rest like saying, touch hands. Do you, do you have any questions? Whatever. He looks at me like this full monkey face like i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna fucking and i'm just looking at him like this all right let's go we go back and even in his swing like don't get me wrong i wasn't super composed on my on, on my hands um in fact you, you saw the fight right i wasn't no, composed at all no, yeah, definitely. In, in that sense you exploded at the very beginning and you were just going at it well yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, uh, I, I just knew I couldn't make it simple for him, like, and uh, I, I got a little bit too excited, I'll say that. For sure. Um, but the thing is, man, at the end of the day, like, <laughs> I was too good for him. Like, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I, I, don't, I, I want to stay humble as well, but at the end of the day, you know, like, don't, don't come up in someone's face and be like that about someone that's about to break you in half. And then we went out there. He hit me good, like he was beating me at the striking. I get him on the ground. I I, I I knew exactly what he was gonna do as well. Like I think people think that he bucked me over when when it got into the triangle armbar situation. Um, no, <laughs> I was on top of him. I was waiting for him to buck and as he did that, I lifted his head up and threw my leg under for the triangle, rolled into it and got the armbar. I set it up, like, I knew what I was doing, you know? And um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing of malice at all, but I, destroyed his arm ba, 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 like that you know it, it wasn't like it wasn't anything like against him personally it was just like in the motion that's just how it happened right which is just what happens sometimes right um i don't by any means want to hurt anyone you know what i mean um and then after he gets up and it's instant excuses you know i'm like man just take this one, bro. <laughs> just take, he goes, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 whatever. I was like, cause I first said to him, I said, yeah, man, you had me on the feet there. That was, that was good. But, um, yeah. And then and he just goes, yeah, bro. Like I'm a white belt in Jiu Jitsu. Like, He's like, I'm a white belt in Jiu Jitsu, sir. I was like, I'm a white belt in striking. What are you talking about, mate? <laughs> like I'm, I'm still in the blue belt in Jiu Jitsu as well. Relax. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, but yeah. Um, like I said, could talk about this forever. Why don't, why don't we, uh, move on to the next one? Huh? No, yeah, definitely. I mean, Dude, no issues whatsoever. I mean, first and foremost, I want to say, like, talking to you, first and foremost, I think your confidence to me stands out more importantly. And I think that that's a really important attribute and skill set to have as a mixed martial artist. And, and like you said, you know, coming from this background, training in the gym, we're taught respect first and foremost. And, like, even if the shit talk is for build up or to build up hype or something, I mean, yeah. after the fight, there has to be some modicum of respect. And, you know, Obviously, you can say victory and victory and make excuses and stuff, but I think that the way you composed yourself and held yourself together, all things considered, and given the circumstances, you did a very good job of it. And I think your adjustments on the fly and your mindset towards the game speaks volumes of your character and commitment inside the gym and outside the gym. Because like you said, and I think something that stood out to me about what you said was the visualization part. I think I've had that moment where I'm sitting ahead of a jujitsu class and I'm, I'm visualizing what I learned the last class out and I'm thinking of myself scenarios in my head, kind of daydreaming almost in a sense of what's to come. And I think that that's very much echoed in fighting. The sentiment is the same there. You can echo setups in your mind and really think about it and visualize it and say, if the fight gets to this point, I can see it ending this way. I can see it ending this way and going down different pathways because fighting is not linear. Like you can, you could start here and you can go over here, over here, over here. The pathway for fighting is not, is never, almost never, hopefully never going to be the same. You know, every fight's a different fight, but the way you kind of held yourself, I think just you're watching you on your Instagram live and obviously a bit of an awkward situation. The first fight, I really wish you had gotten that three fights, you know, them making you want having to possibly fight a girl on the bracket. I'm like, what the hell is going on, dude? I'm it's like, pretty ridiculous. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, no, uh, sorry. Go on. I was like, God damn, like, how, how could that happen where he, he slated to fight a girl? I'm like, that can't be right. Like, what happened with the bracket situation? Yeah, so first of all, they were just like terribly unorganized. Like it was pretty, it was just an absolute shit show the whole time. Um, I'm not going to go into it because like, <laughs> I'm not just going to complain about that. But like, 
yeah, that day I was all warmed up. I was ready to go, man. I was feeling it, eh? Like I was ready to go. I walk out. They call me out a bit earlier than I than I had planned, but I was still like, it's all right. Like I'm warm, so it's fine. They get out. They go. They literally said to me exactly this. So and like like they were just serious, like it was such a normal thing. So we've got you finding a girl, and I'm looking. What the? F- <laughs> I'm like, I'm not. I'm not fighting a girl, you know, like there are some absolute machine chicks that are fighting MMA, you know, and I will say right now that some of them could definitely beat me in a fucking MMA match, but regardless, I'm not punching a girl in the face, it's not happening, you know what I mean, um, and you know, it, it's a brutal sport, you're not, you're not messing with that sort of stuff, and I just said, like, no, <laughs> What, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, well, we're not actually going to make you fight. Like, why, do you, why do you bleed with that, man? Anyway, um, you know, we're not going we're, we're to have you fighting. It's just that we accidentally put her in your bracket. Um, I don't know how that possibly happened because originally there were eight fighters in the bracket even like weeks ago. So it was meant to be that everyone, whoever it was, is going to get a fight on that first thing and then we're all going to progress together. Um the, the guy that I ended up fighting first, which should have been like my second match, ended up also getting a bye in the first round. So I guess that kind of meant like we were both fresh, so it evened it out a little bit. But, you know, is, is what it is there. Um, it, it was really silly, to be honest. But at the same time, you know, it was, it was kind of nice in a way because I got like a rehearsal day where I went in there, warmed up, got all ready, like felt atmosphere, and then I didn't end up fighting. It's like, obviously you wouldn't do that if you could choose not to, but then I just took that as a positive because why wouldn't I? And then um, I'm like, yeah, we might as well might as well look at it like that. That's exactly what my coach said to me. I called little Igor and I just like told him what happened. He's like, all right, rehearsal, sweet, no problem. I'm like, okay, that's true. Um, I went back, I chilled, I just watched a movie or something like that, something lighthearted, and then the next day we went so oh, yeah definitely and i think like just in terms of an experience i think that overall just the gamma experience you going there with the team you know traveling over there with alan philpot brandon white you know obviously out picks there for the videography part of it and you know and yeah. then just having the team there side by side with you um and i and luke kelly i should say you know also him you know just having everyone there from team australia kind of an out-of-body experience, I'd imagine. Everyone kind of coming together from Igor, or like the guys from Igor's, and then obviously Team Australia, an out-of-body experience, because a lot of you guys are obviously also on the similar trajectory. All of you guys are making your, your starting out on that on that Gamma card, some of you, and like making your debuts. And it's a long time brewing. So I, overall, just from the, looking in from the outside, I mean, like you said, we could talk about this for hours, but looking in from the outside, success is all around. I think a great event for you, a great showing for you, and some much needed cage time, you know? Like you said, I know you've been competing in jiu-jitsu competitions outside of fighting, and you've been very active and steadfast in that goal of just being active in the jiu-jitsu front, but it was nice to see you finally take your foot into the octagon, or, or in the ring, I should say, and just be able to get that wealth of experience there. So, like, that's an exciting part, and then also just, I mean, talking about Igor MMA, you know, I think we can go on for hours talking about the gym, honestly speaking, like, probably one of my favorite gyms for the amateur scene, period, you know? I think in the States, there's a culture that around amateur gyms and just amateur fighters that doesn't really echo the same sentiments of Igor's gym, where the amateurs are up there with the pros. I've spoken to Josh time and time again, and what he said to me really stands out to me. He's like, these are my future training partners, dude. The way we're preparing these guys is they are the future of this sport, and we're not treating them like babies, like some amateurs might be treated. We're treating them like they're pros and we're throwing them exactly into that atmosphere. So I wanted to talk to you about that a little bit. Obviously, how does it yep. feel like to train at Igor's and just be able to immerse yourself in such a an amateur and pro-friendly environment to where guys your age, all of you guys are coming up and all of you guys are excelling at such a high and amazing rate. Yeah. Yeah. So just quickly before I talk about that, I just wanted to say, uh, I just wanted to bring mention because it feels wrong almost not to. Um, you're talking about like sort of me being out, going with the Igor boys and all this um, to to New Zealand. That's all great. Uh, it's it, it's amazing to have teammates around, you know. Um, it was really cool, specifically like obviously everyone, right? But to have Luke there, um, Luke and I are really funny. Like we're we're almost like a like two sides of the of the same coin in the sense that like I'm like the grappler, he's the striker, and we're always teaching each other things. Um, but I must make mention that my main team going there was my family. Uh, it's my my older brother and my dad, and um, 
don't get me wrong uh my mum and my little sister support me so much too but they can't fathom that they can't fathom watching that you know um but yeah my my dad and my brother really really like we all connect very well and you know without them there it's not that i wouldn't have done it i think i would have still made it happen but it would have been a whole different experience and i wouldn't have enjoyed it as much and i still don't think i would have done as well without them. Um, yeah, so I just feel like I just have to mention that as well because obviously I've got my Igor family, but man, there's nothing like family, family as well, you know what I mean? So, no, yeah, definitely. And I mean, not even to make mention, I know that you have a very tight bond with your older brother, and I know that's something yep. that for you is like really holds true is just having him by your side and having family, right. you know, like you said, family, family is a one of a kind out of body feeling, just having them supporting you in your goals and your dreams and your ambitions. And then just having the best of both worlds. You have not only your family backing you, but you also have your Igor brothers and sisters backing you in the gym. Uh, an amazing, you know, just an amazing support system all around makes a difference, really, whether a fighter wins or loses. I love to say, if you don't have a good support system as a fighter, it's really hard to reach any metric or volume of success otherwise. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, absolutely. Um, and to get on to your other question now. So, it's... It's interesting that you bring that up because I, I just recently watched that interview that you did with Josh. It was like pretty recent interview, right? Um, I just recently watched that and uh, I heard him speaking about that too. And I was actually really thinking about that just today. Um, it's awesome. He, he couldn't have put it any better. Um, but yeah, it's that, it's that, you know, he talks about bringing us up. So one day we're training partners for him and it's like that give and take, right? Um, I think he talked about it as being like good karma, right? And, uh, you know, it's like it's like Dustin Poirier said. I don't know if you remember, like calm is not a bitch; it's a mirror. You remember that uh, when he said that uh, about about McGregor, right? And um, it truly is like that's 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 a really it's a really big thing in my life. Uh, just in general, it's everything being like yin yang, everything being in balance. Um, it's you know again one of one of little Igor's big big things as well. Uh, and yeah, like listening to Josh talk about that is pretty, pretty inspirational to me. Um, I really see it that way as well. And I want to always push Josh in himself and the other boys, of course. Um, it's an interesting one because it's hard for us, obviously, to be doing anything to Josh, right? Like if he really wants to, he can put it on us all. But he works specific things that he needs to work on. He gets the, gets us in positions that we have to think about and he grows us. And I'm telling you in, in a matter of months, like if you look at like, not just me, but if you look at the whole amateur team, one month to the next, to the next, to the next, every single month, you will see crazy improvement. It's ridiculous. And although I credit most of that, um, to our, our, I'm not even going to say most. I'm going to say a lot of that to our coach, our our learning straight from Igor, both Igors. Um, so much of it is also just Josh, right? Man, he he he's he's like he's like big bro, right? I, he's always he's always making the vibe in the gym better. He's always making everything fucking sweet for everyone and making us push ourselves and each other, which is crazy. It's 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 amazing to have. And like I said this to Josh ages ago i i don't think i don't know if he'd remember it or not but um you know right now he's in the come up in the ufc right i i don't know how far away he is from it but he'd be close enough to look to start looking at being ranked right like as in a few fights or something like that away from being ranked now to me that says then a few fights after that you know a few and a few and a few you're looking at champ status and i really believe in josh i believe in josh so much like i really really do and i don't think anyone understands actually how good he is unless you're training with him i think all the boys like the eagle boys know but i don't think anyone else does you know what i mean um so the way i see it is like this and i haven't talked to many people about this but uh volkanovsky is gonna go up a weight or he's gonna retire at some stage in the next few years and maybe someone takes that from him. I don't think that will take it from him, but whatever, we won't get into that for now. Uh, maybe it gets taken in some way, shape or form. And I think not long after Josh takes it. And I see it like this. In three years, four years, I'm gonna be in the UFC. And when that time comes, we'll be a similar stage to Josh getting champ status. And then it's gonna be like in, this, in a similar way to, to Josh and, and Volk, like Josh, like working through the ranks while, while Volk's champing out. I think it's going to be like that. 
and I'm going to work through the ranks. And then he's going to get to the stage where either he's done in the sport or whatever it is. And then it's my turn. Because we're in the same weight division as well, right? In featherweight. Um, who knows? I might end up being a bantamweight as well. But that, that's we'll see what happens there. Um, but yeah, like that's that's for me that's one of that's one of the cool little visions for me uh either way i know i'm i'm going there you know what i mean but uh, it would be really cool to have that like run where i'm coming up the ranks while josh is the shit in uh in in champ status of the division you know that would be really cool no yeah and i do think doable as well genuinely no yeah absolutely i think in terms of mindset i have to say flint of of a lot of the fighters i've spoken to i think that in terms of self-confidence, I think that's something really important to have as a fighter. Uh, because if, if you're not confident that you can beat the best in the world, then fighting is not for you. I think that that truly really is something that you have to have, is confidence within your abilities. And I think that the way that you're evolving, the way that the other Igor guys are evolving, it's truly a matter matter of time until we see a lot of these guys in the UFC. You know, obviously Joe Largenesi, you mentioned the big, uh, big power Largenesi right hand. You know, I think he's on the cusp of making the UFC in a year or two time. At 125, you know, you look at the depth of the division, it needs some fresh blood. And with someone like Joe, who's progressing at such a fast rate, you know, he can think, you look at Perry, you look at Shy, you look at Brandon, you know, these are guys that are putting in the hours on the mat. Not to mention Ben Patterson. I mean, look at looking at how phenomenal he's been in the cage thus far. The list goes on and on. You know, everybody out of Igor's has this trait or something about them that really speaks to their evolution you know time and time again they've shown that they can battle through adversity they can really excel in the sport and i think that yeah. it's all like you said to attribute to the both the igors both to josh both to alan both to johnny barabena and you know just a yeah. lot of other outside factors that are coming into the gym or are in the gym and they're helping the guys come up and i think that it really speaks volumes to the mindset shift because we're coming at a time where Australian mixed martial arts is booming right now. There's no exception to that. I think it's not even a con point of contest. It's like sure. Australian mixed martial arts is has developed so much in such a short amount of time, despite a lack of media coverage. And now we're at a point where you know the amateur the amateur scene in Australia is booming. There's multiple successful shows, multiple opportunities for these guys to put on, and a booming regional circuit. I mean, you got like Hex Fighting Series, you've got Eternal, you've got Urban Fight Night. Those are just three amazing professional promotions. Yep. It's like the list goes on and on. And, and I think that really it comes down to just um, a love for the sport. I think in Australia, yep. fighting is second nature. And without a love for the sport, you really cannot evolve in it. So it's been nice to see Igor's, Igor MMA and the Igor Gym really take a form, a life of its own and really excel in that department. Because it's, a, it's like you, you really don't stop to think about it until you see it. It's like... I don't think you could point to another gym in Australia or maybe even nationally, uh, globally where, you know, the median age of the amateurs is, is under 24. You know, you look at Perry's 20 years old, Shai's 20 years old. I, I presume you're 20 years old. Are you old too? Uh, 18. 18? You're 18? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're 04. What the fuck? Or, oh, I should... 04. Yeah. yeah, fuck me. Uh, now I feel old. I'm, I'm 20, but <laughs> not even that old, give or take. But, you know, it's like... You look at the median age, it's like you're 18, Perry's 20, Shy's 20, Brandon's in his mid-20s, you know, Ben is in his early mid-20s, you know, it's like, and Big Joe even, and, and Jacob, you know, the, the median age is like 20 years old, 21, 22 years old, like, it's crazy, it's, it's crazy, Look. at the highest level, at fighting at such a high level, at such a young age, and it's not just one of you, it's like five or six or seven of you guys in that age bracket, you can't replicate that anywhere else in the world. I don't think there's an amateur team as strong as Igor's amateur team right now. Yeah, uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm very happy to hear you say that because it shows like the recognition, right? Um, I'm going to say this right now, like with confidence. There are multiple people, people in our team that are making the UFC and not just making the UFC, they're making it big in the UFC. This is a thing. Let me, let me explain, probably not for you, you probably understand this, but for anyone else, right? It's like there are levels and levels and levels. And just when you think it's not that hard to make it in, in MMA, it's fucking harder to make it than you would think. It's like, okay, you have to be winning like jujitsu comps. You have to be winning like little kickboxing comps. You have to have all your little fights then, and you have to be winning all of them. No one 
gives a fuck about someone that doesn't lose? You just, at the end of the day, it uh, doesn't win, I mean. At the end of the day, you need losses, right? It's a big part of it, right? It, a huge part of it is losing. But generally speaking, you need to win and you need to win a lot. And the thing is, right, you go through all these stages and let's say like you make it through all your amateurs. Like you don't need to be undefeated in amateur, but like let's say you've got a, a relatively okay record and you've gotten some nice finishes and, you know, you, you're confident in your skill set. Now you go pro, it's a whole different game. Then you've got to go all through that and then you make the cusp of the UFC. And then you think those guys that are just making the UFC – at anything compared to the champions not at all then you got to go all the way up your ranks and build up to that status and i'm telling you right now that even after understanding that and really pondering on that for a long time because this is my life right so like i have thought about that of course like of course like i'd ha i've had doubts you know what i mean like there's no way you can go about this life without having doubts i just don't feel them anymore because i've overcome them and i don't think i will much at all anymore because i just know i'm 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 so confident in myself now that I've overcome that. But I think everyone at least thinks about it, right? And still knowing all that and not being naive to it in any way, I'm telling you right now that at least three people are making it big in 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 uh in the UFC or or in other big promotions from Eagle MMA and maybe more. Like I think I, I'm confident that everyone that you named before is going somewhere in MMA. Um in a sheer numbers game, of course, we will lose a couple people along the way. Like, generally speaking, like at least one or two of those people out of the numbers will, you know, get married and then the family will be more important or they'll have to get a job to support a kid that they have or whatever, you know. And sometimes that's just like the way it goes. So presumably, you know, like you do lose a couple of people along the way. Um, I won't name any specific names because then it sounds like I'm cherry picking who I'm not. But I have like in my mind. Uh, a few of the guys that I am fairly, fairly freaking confident that I know are going to make it. The thing is, I am in the gym every day. I train full time, right? Like I, like I said, I was telling you before the interview, like I left school to do this. Um, you know, like obviously I can't be in the gym all day, every day. Like for example, like the last couple of days I've been a bit sick. So I'm trying to taper off a bit because I know that'll make me worse, right? But I see like the people that are putting in the hours as well. So I know... I know the people that, that are willing to go those extra miles. So I see it and it's like, it's pretty obvious to me that like they are improving so much, so much faster than everyone else and that they are willing to go the distance. So me seeing that, like for me, I know I'm doing it and I know I'll get that. I know I still need to train hard. It's always like a, a matter of like training harder than you, than you thought you, it was your hardest you can train, you know? Um, but like, I know that I'm going to make it, but there's some guys that I also know will make it because they're doing the same thing you know what i mean and maybe it's just me being stubborn but i, I i'm not gonna let someone else make it when i'm not you know what i mean oh well, yeah definitely and yeah. it's like i think more importantly it's that drive and push for competition it's like if you don't have that competition backing you it's very hard to really um get anywhere you know you've got to have guys that are willing to put in the time same time as you and i think you really get that from the igor mma gym it's like all of these guys are really putting in the time really putting in the hours really putting in the dedication putting it in there all to really make the most of this opportunity. And like you said, you know, and I want to touch on this a bit. You know, obviously you took time away from school and you, you left school to really pursue this dream of being a mixed martial artist. Talk to me about a little yeah. bit about getting into that decision and what kind of prompted the decision. Cause it's a, it's a pretty hefty decision to make, you know, to, to put yeah. school to the side, say, you know, it's not for me. Fighting is all I want to do. Fighting a fighter is all I want to be. Talk to me about that decision. And just obviously, you know, going through it and what was kind of the thought process behind such a monumental decision yeah so it, like that was that was a that was an enormous uh pivoting point in my life right i was i was halfway through year 11 i i w i wasn't i wasn't dumb by any means i was I, I think I'm an intelligent person, but um, school and the way they teach is just not for me right um i've known that since I was young in school, I never liked school, right? But it was all right, whatever. Um, one day I was just talking to an old coach of mine. Sorry about that. An old coach of mine um, who like only coached me for the first year of my jiu-jitsu and then sort of like went went on his own journey um, in jiu-jitsu trying to be a world champion in black belt, right? And um, he spoke to me, he was back in town. He was like, man, I heard you're getting into MMA. Awesome. He used to do a bit of MMA too. He's like, why are you still at school? And I was like, bro, like this sounds like the worst influence ever coming in and saying that, right? But he talks to me, he's like, man, school is for people that want to do, 
do school things. He's like, you want to be an MMA fighter? You're missing out on precious time. I was like, oh, I've only got a year and a half left at school. A year and a half, he goes. A year and a half. Do you know how good you can get at MMA in a year and a half? Fuck. When you put it like that, that's true, right? Man, I'd already asked my parents to drop out, what, fucking 8,000 times, right? Um, they, It was a simple no. It was a no, you're not doing it. You know what I mean? Like, it it, it, it didn't happen. Um, You know, it was, I think it was after many conversations and, and really, like, I'm good with my family completely, but that really did put a lot of strain on my relationship with my parents at that time um, because I just felt like they, they like, hated me. Like they like didn't they didn't want what was good for me. They just wanted me to like you know do what everyone else did. It was just because they didn't understand. Like most parents wouldn't understand when you tell them I want to leave school and be a fighter, right? Um, and I think it wasn't until one day where I, for probably the fifth time, sat down with them and spoke about this this topic, and I said, "Mom, Dad, like I hate school. Like it, you you I'm doing this for you, and it sucks every day. I." hate what I do. I'm thinking about jujitsu. I'm thinking about MMA and you're forcing me to be here. I say, I sleep in, I sleep in most classes, which I did. I slept in most classes. And if I wasn't sleeping, I was drawing like ridiculous drawings during the day, like just like passing time. I would like count down the minutes on the final bell and go straight to training. Right. Um, give me a second, please. My little sister I just got home. Um, yeah. And then, um, and then they realized and they were like, all right, let's make this happen. Let's talk to your principal, see what we can do. And then and then I leave. The next day, we go into lockdown. I was like, fuck off, give me a break. So then like I couldn't train for the first like six months or whatever that I left school. So I was just like at home, pretty like pretty I don't want to say down in the dumps. Like I was sweet, you know what I mean? But like without training for me, that's such a huge part of my life. And like I'm a very happy person, but uh it's it's really hard to to maintain that positivity when you feel like your purpose uh isn't isn't going isn't isn't happening, you know, like when you're not when you're not working towards your passion, towards your purpose, it's it's pretty hard to be passed. And then the second we got out of that, um I eventually got into the the whole M Igor MMA and uh from there it's all been like this so no yeah absolutely and i love what you mentioned and preface it's like you look at it from that point of view it's like and i think the the low the thing on the back of your wall uh, on your wall i should say on the back of you on your wall says it perfectly and for those who can't read it i know you guys see the last line it says fear kills more dreams than failure ever will and i think that that's really it's just really is the story you know throughout the pandemic a theme of which has been you know for a lot of people is like the pandemic for us especially us in a younger age bracket you know from 18 to 22 it really became a point where we're like you know we have this excess amount of time why don't we really go all in on our passions why don't we really go all in and dive in on what, what it is we love to do and like whether for me it was you know training and doing this content stuff and for you it was just training out right all full time and immersing yourself in the world that makes martial arts and fighting it's like why why not try to do what you love and if it doesn't work out then you can obviously deviate from that path and think but don't even put out the fact that you don't think it will happen put out the fact that you do think it will happen it's just a matter of when and i think that with you flynn i really get this idea of passion passion reigns supreme it's like if you're if you're not loving what you're doing what what good is it to even do it to begin with and i really get that from you and it really gravitates off your personality and I want to ask you just, I guess, to just to ask you for the sake of like the question, obviously, what does the term, what is the phrase fear will fear kills more dreams than failure ever will mean for you? And how powerful is it to you? It's so much so that you have it written on your wall, you know, because I think for you, you obviously you have this burning desire to succeed. You have this burning desire that, you know, you will get to some place in this sport. What does it mean to you to be able to do this full time? And what does that phrase mean to you in terms of the weight and gravity that it holds on your life? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, to say how much it means to me, as you were saying it out loud, literally got chills. Not even joking, right? It's like it's one of these things where I I put things I put things in my room um, 
just to just to surround myself I, I i picture it like in my head like it's like the words like sink into you like you soak it up like a sponge and it's it's not the only thing i've got in here like this is my little vision board behind with the ufc stuff and uh over on the other side i've got a few other things like the, you know the no excuses when, when you feel you have to keep going that sort of thing like uh not exactly like that but it's a quote about that sort of stuff um but this one's the first one i had in here and and i'm gonna go ahead and say that it's the most important one and um the, the the meaning to me is just you know if you're if you if you want to be if you want to be scared that's all right like you you can be scared but don't let that don't let that get in the way of your dreams it's like failure is is what you're usually scared of right generally speaking people like don't want to have a fight with someone or don't want to like, you know have a jiu-jitsu match with someone or whatever because they're scared of failure and that can't be that can't be what's happening. You have to be okay to fail. And the thing is, I am really big on winning in itself, right? And I know that sounds like oh, everyone's big on winning. No, like I think it's super essential that you win because like, you know, I, I think it was Josh that said this to me first. It's like history remembers winners, right? So if you want to be something in a sport, you do have to win. But along the path to get there, it's not all winning. You lose and that just is what it is. So fear kills more dreams than failure ever will is the one of the most true statements that I know. Um, people are scared of failure and being so scared of failure, they they stop what they actually want to do instead of just failing and keeping going. You know, how silly is that? I know it sounds ridiculous when I say it like that, right? But that's actually what stops most people. Um, yeah, so man, I, I, I have it in my room. It's like, it's preaching to me. It's like, it's calling down to me. Um, I also like the way I, like I wrote that. I, I first saw it at um at a boxing gym. Like my first ever like any striking experience. I didn't do too much boxing there, but I saw that quote and I was like, yeah, that's the shit. That's what's up. <laughs> so uh, yeah, fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. Uh, I really I really do live my life by that. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I guess just in terms of the quality of conversation, I have to say, Flynn, like really first and foremost, thank you just for I think inspiration. After this, I want to get up and. You know, just go jump in the uh, jump in the freaking pool outside and go swim, do a hundred laps or something like that. Like, I think the way that you go about the sport and really your inspiration behind what it is that you do is truly remarkable and refreshing to see a young man with such. Uh, I mean, I'm not that much older. Fuck, what am I saying? But you know, seeing someone in a similar age bracket, like just really getting after their dreams and really being vocal about how much they want to succeed and and being motivated. And I have to say, like. You're like looking at the looking at the jacket you're wearing. I'm like, fuck, bro. I'm I'm sitting here right next to Andrew Tate right now, getting motivated right now. I'm like, I'm like, bro, is wearing the Andrew Tate jacket right now, spitting bars back to back to back to back to back to back. I know Tate's a, con a controversial figure. I won't get too much into that for the sake of a uh, YouTube coffee. I mean, we could if we had bro. another few hours, bro. But, but I got I got to get to training too, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, first and foremost, obviously, thank you so much for your time, for the good energy and. For just being candid about your your wanting to and desire your want and desire more importantly to succeed i think as as a young adult success is obviously something that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves you know like we really have this endless drive and pursuit to really succeed and we want that and not so much the money but we really want to put ourselves in a position where success is a byproduct of just everything else in our life you know like yeah. And we're so good at what we do that we can support ourselves and, and be comfortable and just be able to have an influence and impact other people's lives. And for that, I thank you so much for just the energy and uh, that you bring. It's a good intensity. I think it's a, uh, it's, it's a much needed different intensity compared to the, yeah. to the usual podcast. And I guess just one more question. Obviously, um, coming off your MMA debut, that was a phenomenal performance. But what are some personal goals you have? You know, just... Are they all kind of tied into fighting or any personal goals you have just in terms of family or, you know, personal goals for yourself, you know, as a, as a person? Um, you know, man, this is, this really is something that I could talk about for a long time. Um, if, if I'm to give you the wrap up, um, I don't want to sound pretentious or anything, um, but I want to be a good man. You know what I mean? I want to be a good man in my life. Um, I want to make others enjoy their life more because I'm in it, you know, um, I want, I want to be, I guess the reason where the reason that people believe good people exist, you know, like for some people, you know, of course, a lot of people will, will have that one person that comes in their life and like, Oh yeah, this isn't so shit, you know? And I understand that no one, no one in history ever really can grasp 
every single person and make every single person like believe something, you know, but I would love to, to, uh, to influence my share of people, you know, that's part of it. I mean, for myself as as well, like I, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to be a good family man. I'm sure one day a good husband, whatever, good father, um, you know, like, and right now it's just a matter of, of building that experience, being around people that do that well. So like my, my dad and my coaches and whatnot, that sort of thing is like, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very selective on who I model my life around. I'm very, very selective on who I'm influenced by. It's, it's a very, very small amount of people. I've got a list. Like I literally know exactly who I, who I take influence from because they're the people I want to be like. Um, and then one day, you know, like I, I truly do want to be one of the greats. Uh, I want to, I, I, it's not, a, I think we were talking about this just before the interview started, right? It's like, it's not about fame for me. In fact, I would rather not be famous. Uh, my ideal is, you know, go influence a bunch of people and then pretty much disappear off the face of the earth. But, uh, you know, in a way that I've left behind something that, uh, people, people will be changed for the better. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. And on that note, obviously a phenomenal note to end on is just impacting the world, leave your mark on the world. And I think you'll mix martial arts. I hope that both of us can leave our mark in some way or shape or form, you know, really be able to push a good message and push a good way of life and a quality lifestyle. And for that, I mean, I thank you so much, Flynn, for your time, for your good energy. Um, I know the Igor boys are, are might or may or may not have a field day with this. We well, to be determined. We'll have to see when I interview the next guy from Igor, you know, so very, very, very soon, whoever it may be. But um, just first and foremost, I think that you bring a great intensity. I think you bring a great conversation and i think you bring great points more importantly on how you know in this day and age where our generation is kind of looked at as a little bit more i guess you know not as prepared for the world you really bring a refreshing perspective of you know just kind of how if you you can find people in any walk of life that are driven and it's on this pursuit for success and you know myself and you we are on this endless pursuit to be better than the day before so like on yeah. that note i mean i just hope that we can give some sort of value to maybe somebody watching just struggling to find where they can implement some sort of like you know success or find some success or some metric and i mean on that note guys i think you guys should check out flynn on social media if you guys did enjoy this interview do be sure to check him out on social media i'm sure there's going to be a ton of clips from this podcast he's going to post throughout uh social media over time do be sure to check it out do be sure to like comment subscribe on the youtube channel if you guys have enjoyed this video it's been me from dan it's been me dan from fight with guys Hopefully you guys enjoyed once again and have a great day, guys.